Good morning to all of you. I'm thankful for everyone that showed up this morning. I'm thankful that God is with us, that he's leading us in the way of love. And he's continuing to lead us in the way of love. This is so, so important. As we say, even as my shirt says, God is love. God is love. And sometimes we search so hard. We work so hard in our effort to find God when if we look for the way of love, then we're going to find God. We're going to, we're going to find ourselves in step in the kind of step in the path and moving along uh, in a way that God will have us to move. Today we will be on conscious love part two. And conscious being, being conscious of anything is being woke. And I like to say be being present, but I want you to hear that conscious love is so important because oftentimes if we're not careful, we love in an unconscious way. And then we try to have successful relationships in this unconscious way. One of the scriptures that we used, which was um, in the last series, which was um, unfailing love, was Philippians 1, 9 through 11. And it talks about, he says, um, it says something like um, uh, 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 the writer was praying for, for, for that particular group. And he says to them that the prayer was that their love would flourish. And that they would be able to love with all knowledge and discernment so that other things could take place. And then it says in one version that we would learn to love appropriately. So that's kind of what brought me to conscious love because when I, to the to this series, because in, in the thought of, well, in, in the question of learning to love appropriately, I understood that if I'm not, if I'm unaware of, 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 all that it takes to truly love in, in the way that God says love. If I am unconscious in any way, then it's going to be difficult to, for me to love appropriately. And God is always moving us to the place of love, to a place where we can love appropriately. We don't always welcome the God's way of getting us there, but God is always trying, always attempting to get us there. Always sending something because God is love. And if we're going to uh, reach a connection to God uh, uh, and have uh, the, the image of God within us to shepherd us, or let's say it this way, we, if we find ourselves being shepherded by the Holy Spirit versus being shepherded by fear, we're going to see the difference in love. And we're going to see that God is constantly leading us away from that love. This is why we read perfect love, mature love. It is. It drives out fear. That means, and, and, and where there is fear, uh, love is not mature. It's as simple as that. Wherever I am fearing, somewhere along the line, my perception, my thoughts about love, my thoughts about God need to grow. And this is why uh, changing lives from the inside out by leading people into a growing relationship with Christ by leading people into a growing relationship as sons of God, by leading people into a growing relationship of the body of Christ, that means identif identifying with Christ, finding our identity in Christ. So we're leading and we're moving uh, uh, and changing lives from the inside out because we understand. We understand, again, as we say here, this is a body suit. What, what's going to be left at the end, it's going to be essence. How do we know that? We know that because as God came in a physical presence. God showed up and showed man how to do it, how to live it in a physical presence. But what did that physical presence, what did that physical presence do? That physical presence handed it back over to essence, which is the Holy Spirit. To that meaning the unseen. Because the physical presence was also the essence of God with it. And so, listen, when it comes to where we are and what we're doing and, 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 and the mind shift that we have to have is one, we're going to have to embrace the fact that, listen, uh, 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 if we are the body of Christ and we're connected to, to God that way, then at some point, we too are going to have to move into the love relationship as a begotten offspring. How can I be the body of Christ? 
How, how, how could I be the limbs? How could I be the extension of that life and not be that life and not be connected to that life, not have that life in me and not receive the inheritance of that life? See, we say all these things, but then we 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 sometimes um, are not in a position mentally to receive it. How does that look? And when we're not in a position mentally, emotionally, in our mind and heart to receive it, then what we give off is resistance. We give off God, I welcome you language, but our body and our position and our disposition is one of resistance. This is why Jesus could say, listen, you all, you all praise me with your mouth. You all uh, 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 give me lip service. So that this lip service thing is not new. It's not new, but it was not acceptable to God then. And it's not acceptable to God now. God wants us to, to be more than people who just simply talk about something more than hearers of the word, but to be doers of this word, to walk this life out. So I pray today that you got your listening ears on, not just your hearing ears, but your listening ears on, that you have some pencil and paper or whatever, your phone, I don't know where you put your notes at, but you'll be ready to take some notes. Because why is that? So that we can look intently into what we hear today and allow ourselves to be transformed as we surrender to how to whatever God speaks to each and every one of us. So with that said, let's go to slide one. We're going to review a little bit and then we'll go to some new some new information. Slide one. First Corinthians 13, 9 through 12. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when perfection comes, imperfect disappears. See, hear it this way too. Perfect love drives out fear. When the perfect, the perf when perfection comes, when we are perfected in love, it's going to drive out anything that is imperfect. So look at this as love and fear. That's why perfect love drives out fear. When it comes, when we get to the place where we can see, see um, um, with our spirit and not just with our senses, when we can feel and walk this walk, not just in our being led by our senses, but being led by the spirit, we will mature. And when that happens and that perfection comes, when that maturity comes, the imperfect uh, disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. So there is a becoming that is taking place. He said when I became and when he was uh, uh, when he became a man and 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 that in, in the spirit realm, when I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see but a poor reflection that's in the mirror. God knows we see a poor reflection. And you know, we have we have a poor reflection of love. We have a poor reflection of what love is. We have a poor reflection of what God is and who God is and, and, and what God's goals are. But then when that perfection comes, it says, then we shall see. When we get perfected in love, then we'll sh we shall see face to face. It'll be clear, face to face. No more poor reflections. See, now I know in part. Then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. Take that down. Here's a question I ask myself. What happens when I'm, a I'm afraid of the voice, the unknown part of me? You see, it's somewhere along the line. If we know in part and we prophesy in part, meaning we're speaking in part, we're speaking the things of God in part. We're speaking about God in part. And he says, but 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 when that understanding comes, when that perfection comes, all of that is going to change. But in the meantime, in between time, what happens when I'm afraid of the voice of that own not, not unknown part of me? See, that fully known part of me has always, is always true. And the reason why it's important to hear that, because some sometimes <laughs> we think that, that we're not fully known. See, this is why it's ridiculous to hide. It's ridiculous to believe, as we would say, I said uh, a Wednesday, and I'll say again today later, it's ridiculous to try to find refuge in a lie. You're fully known. And the reason why that's, but I want you to hear that from the good side. If you're fully known and God still loves you, 
then rewrite your idea of what kind of God we serve. See, oftentimes when we are not fully known, and I, I say this, when I'm not open to the full knowledge of me. See, God always knows and try to get to us the full knowledge of us. We're the one that reject ourselves. We're the one that dismiss ourselves with falsehoods and lies and lies. Believing that we can hide, believing that we should hide. But God says everything is open to me. So if everything is open to me and on your good days, you feel that I love you, then on the days that you're not so proud of, you think I stopped loving you? That was always there. The full knowledge of you, Jill, has always been uh, something I uh, God understands and recognize. But love has to be perfected so that all the fear that we have been taught can disappear. The word of God says something like this, right? Um, submit to God. Resist the devil, he'll flee. See, your submission to God is your resistance of the adversary. Your submission to God is your uh, 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 resistance. Resistance doesn't mean avoidance. It means that you stood. And, and, and you stand your ground over that other voice, that adversarial language, that voice, that, 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 that strong voice in this world. And you submit to who God say he is, not to who you believe God is contrary to the whole Bible verses, a couple of scriptures. So the full knowledge of me will say right now, God, give me the strength to allow you to expose and reveal to me the full knowledge of me so that I can love appropriately. So that God, I can return to you, connect to you, instead of remaining disconnected through, through lies and falsehoods. I can return to you so that you can perfect me in that area. So that your perfect love, when I experience it, it'll drive out those fearful thoughts. It'll drive out those dark thoughts. Just like light drives out darkness. Just like light overcomes it, always will consume the darkness. But I have to get past the fact that I do not want to know and experience the feelings that come with the full knowledge of me. So from that first fly, fly, um, slide, what do I want you to understand? God already knows all that. He know that you lied. He know that you didn't tell the whole truth. He 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 know that you uh 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 um uh uh uh, uh change the numbers. God already knows that. And you are not gonna have to face the fact that we do what we do. Because this God of love, which is grace, is also a God of truth and justice. And both are gonna show up. You know. Here's what some folks uh, I learned recently, or I, I understood even more recently. You know, when we say that, um, when Christ says, says, or when we read, um, when or when I am lifted up, I will draw all men to me. That the audience understood that he was referring to something that happened when the children of Israel was grumbling and complaining. And then uh, God sent snakes and those snakes started biting them. But then God also told at the same time, so I want you, I want you to just settle the matter today. At the same time, that, that same God told Moses, now I want you to get a snake and I want you to put it on a pole. Uh, uh, I don't know if it's an image of a snake or a real snake, whatever it is, it's a snake on a pole and, and lift that pole up. And then he told the people, he said, this is going to happen. If you look to that same pole 
that has a snake on it. Snakes are biting you on the ground, but you look to that same pole that has that snake on it, it's going to heal you. See, what God gets to say is, right when I'm, when I'm sorry, you, you, you know, your ankle's getting some bites on it. Because you're grumbling, you're complaining, you're forgetting who I am. I brought you out of Egypt. I delivered you from your spiritual darkness. It, those of us who were delivered uh, uh, through, uh, should I say, um, spiritual Egypt versus the natural Egypt. God said, I did all this for you. I showed you who I was. You prayed to me, I answered. And you tell people that I answered. He says, but I want you to know that I'm this God. That when the snakes was biting him, that is my judgment. But I didn't leave it right there. I also applied mercy. Now look to this same thing. Because it's the same old, same old. It's snakes on the ground, it's snake on the pole. Look at that right there and it's going to heal you. What, what do I take from that? Listen, Jill, you're going to have to know about both parts of me. You have, you're going to have to know. That that grumbling, that complaining, and those things, there is judgment for that. But on the other side of that was mercy and not condemnation. Look to the pole, Jim. So when Jesus said to them, if I be lifted up, I, I will draw all men to me. What they saw was that story. They saw uh, 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 God's mercy. God, the, 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 the grace and mercy of God uh, uh, that mm, brought balance to the judgment. That, that equal out the judgment. See, somehow we think the judgment is not going to happen. The justice is not going to happen. Yes, it is. It's going to happen, but there's mercy. And, and because of the way we are, 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 are taught in this world, parented in this world, um, the different relationships, each each person in this world, we 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 don't think we can have both of those on the table at the same time. Now we know we can because the sky has the moon and has the night and the light, and it's still called sky. So we don't have to let that part of us that we're not so proud of that feels like judgment is about to happen to it feels like. Um, uh, uh, the justice of God, truth is going to show up in that conversation. Not just grace, but truth also is going to show up in that space. And what we get to see is, uh, what does the Bible tell us? Uh, Moses came with truth or, or law, how I said, but Jesus is a minister of grace and truth. Both. Both. And what we're trying to do is get to that. And that's why this next slide is going to Bless me so much from, 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 what was that, Wednesday. Let's go to slide two. Listen, read it with your heart open and your minds open. Listen, real spiritual growth happens when there is only one of you inside. When you're not warring against yourself because we, lo we love to know, knowing the parts of us that are proud, that we're proud of. We just don't like knowing the parts of us that we're not so proud of. We don't like to know in the parts of us. We don't want to know that we are jealous. We don't want to know that for real we're insecure and all of that lacquer and shine that we show the world is that big because it matches the hugeness of our insecurity. We don't want to know about ourselves. So we keep trying to be uh, uh, live as part of ourselves. Not in the full knowledge of ourselves. So now let's read it. Real spiritual growth happens when there is only one of you inside. There's not a part that is scared and another part that's protecting the part that's scared. That's how some of us live. There is a scared part, that part we're not proud of, that part that we don't want people to see, that part that we think is going to be judged. It will. It will. People are going to say something. People are going to have an opinion. But judgment, it only means this. That's an opinion. But God has an opinion too. And that opinion is not going to tell you that God is okay with me being insecure or living in that level of doubt. What that opinion is going to do is expose that and then perfect something. Somebody better praise God on that. And it's going to mature something. 
some childish way, some childish thought, some childish reasoning when it comes to love or when it comes to uh, 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 it, who is entirely you. Here we go. There's not a part that's scared and another part that's protecting the part that's scared. In lots of us, this part is true. There is a part that's scared and there's another part. Always try to present something to the world other than what we was scaring us when we were alone. All parts are unified. This is when real spiritual growth happens. Is when all parts are unified. When the full knowledge of you is what it is. Because there is no part of you that you're not willing to see. See, when there's a part of me that I'm not willing to see. And I know that by the way I tell the story. See, sometimes you can ask somebody a question and rather than come out and say, nope, I, I, I didn't do well. Nope, um, uh, I didn't do this. I, they tell you all of the story to help brace you to receive that truth. And when that happens, you know, you know, I, I, I would have done it, but I hurt my leg. I was going to do this. I was going to work out, but then somebody did this. And, and we, we, we have, we, we create these excuses rather than say, no, I didn't do it. <laughs> nah, I ain't do it today. And there is a reason we do that because somewhere along the line, we only see the truth of God and the grace without the grace. And we have to see it all. And this is what hopefully what this lesson is going to teach us today. So all parts are unified because there is no part of you that you are, you are, you are not willing to see. The mind is no longer divided into conscious and unconscious. What did the God say? Uh, the word of God said, a, a double-minded man shouldn't believe he's going to get receive anything from God. Why is that? Because see, the mind is unconscious. Asleep. Put, we put ourselves to sleep. As I said, you know, some people say, listen, this is so much, I just want to lay down and go to sleep. And 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 this is this has become somebody's coping mechanism. So all parts, when all parts are unified. So so I I I ask you today. To settle that matter. And settling that matter doesn't mean that there are no triggers. It doesn't mean that you're not going to want to escape and cope your kind of way. It does mean that you get to tell yourself God will provide a way of escape so you can stop creating your ways of escape. You know why we have to create so many ways of escape? Because our ways of escape doesn't heal us. It, it just it, it relieves us, but it doesn't heal us. And God is in the healing business. Let's go to slide three. We touched on this on Wednesday as well. Therefore, hear the word of the Lord, you scoffers, who rule this people in Jerusalem. You boast, we have entered. Now, listen, I said to this on Wednesday, they were not necessarily boasting this using audible language. This is someone saying your actions, this is how your actions speak. This is what your actions are saying. Okay. It says you boast, we have entered into a covenant with death, with the grave we have made an agreement. When an overwhelming scorch sweeps by and we all had the overwhelming moments what do we it says this was this is with that that this person on this frequency says it cannot touch us for we have made a lie our refuge and falsehood our hiding place some of us don't take it down have become untouchable but that part when and oh not if when an overwhelming score sweeps by your disposition says it's not you won't let it touch you it cannot touch us, for we have made a lie our refuge, our protection, our protector, and falsehood our hiding place. That's what's going to cover us, another level of protection. Let's take that down. See, when I am afraid of the unknown parts of me, now remember, you only know a part. 
There is some things in you, uh, uh, some mindsets that are going to be brought to the surface so that you can hand them, take them away from darkness and allow light to cause them to disappear. Remember, when, when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. But perfection cannot come without your, mm, it'll come, but it cannot be effect, effective without your cooperation. And we'll see how much, we'll talk about that later. Listen, when an overwhelming scourge sweeps, you know what? Sometimes that overwhelming scourge, with, with this person, use words to call when truth, when, 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 when truth exposes me to the fact that I'm chasing money, that I have not checked in with God, when my life gets shut down and I'm ready to create a lie and a, uh, some, more, some more falsehoods to help me cope with this moment. See, when I'm there, I, I find refuge. When I refuse, when I don't know God as big grace, he said that where sin is there, grace is all the more. We've heard it. But it's hard to see that because we're trying to understand that with our natural senses. Because we're saying, okay, but the punishment is going to be so bad uh, it just can't get, because that's where our mind goes. The sin part, the that's so much, but the grace part is so much. But then we get to the point where, 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 where the church and Christianity, my experience has lived for a while, is now you want grace to just make sin and judgment and truth or justice nothing. No, grace and truth are going to dwell together. This is why we have to rise above this natural sense of dealing with things and fix our eyes on God. Because uh, the kind of grace and truth we was taught is a parent beating you with a belt with a stick saying, this hurts me more than it hurts you. And guess what? And those words in God's hands, I'm, I'm sorry, from God's mouth, may be true. In this sense, in this sense, how would God say that to me? He would say, how, how would I receive that at now that some perfection, some maturity has come into my space? It hurts me. Natural parents, oh, this beating you. You know, you know they don't feel the beat. It hurts me more than I hurt you. Then it hurts you. God would say it this way. Listen, I discipline those I love, who I love. Then he'll start telling you about inheritances. He'll start telling you about the importance of being connected to him. He'll start telling you some lovely things. He'll even give you a, a helper when you're sitting in the corner trying to figure things out. Well, our natural parents don't don't have all that force. You know, some of them go go beat you, then they then they feel guilty and they go buy your bicycle or something. But how does that work for me at this point? No, God. Um absolutely you feel the Holy Spirit feels something. But your grace is so equal or equal or enough for your justice and truth in my life that it's going to keep me centered. You're going to, I'm, I'm going to be right there in the center. Not, 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 not too much uh, justice and then not too so much freedom or uh, non-disciplined life that I go forward and ruin my life. This is what God is able to do. But sometimes that's hard for us. Because we've already learned the world's way of grace and truth. Let's go to slide four. 
Now, slide five, what did I keep that right there? What I, I mean, three, what did I want you to get from this? That when I'm afraid of the known, unknown parts of me, I, I tend to find refuge in a lie and falsehood. I use false and create a false self. And you'll just create a false self. You'll create a, a self that's only living with half of who you are and what you're capable of because you're afraid of the parts that are not perfected. And I pray that we receive today God's love in these areas. First John 3, here we go. Little children, let us not love merely in theory or in speech, but in deed and in truth. In practice and in sincerity. I think I just, I sort of just said this my way. This is more than a theory. Um, It's a practice and, and it involves truth. It says, let us not love merely in theory or in speech, but in deed and in truth. In practice and in sincerity. Love must be sincere. One, one version says, love from your center. Verse 19, by this, by this, when we're not just doing this by theory. Today, I'm hoping that we're going to dispel some of those theories that, that and, and things that we've learned uh, 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 along the way so that we can let God have his way with us. But this we shall come to know, perceive, recognize, and understand that we are of the truth. That's why uh, refuge in a lie and... So false self, you're going to continue to be disturbed. And, and, and you'll see again in one of these scriptures. Here we go. That we are of the truth and can reassure, quiet, conciliate, and pacify our hearts in his presence. Listen. See, why do I need to pacify my heart in his presence? Because when I'm in his presence, I'm in the presence of grace and truth. I'm in the presence of, of justice and mercy. And even though I want to live with only one side of myself, God is not going to do that. Even though I think I'm comfortable by living only, only this other part, that's, that's, that's not who we're standing before. Because God knows that's not the best you and the fault you or try to make it somewhere, try to run a marathon with one leg when you got two. You know, I mean, it's going to take a long time. A real long time. Here we go. Verse 20, whenever our hearts in tormenting self-accusation makes us feel guilty and condemn us. See all that truth in your heart? All that God image inside you? See, every time every time that show up, that's why you create that lie and make it your refuge. Because you want your heart to not tell you when it sends vibrations and triggers through your body to say, uh, you jealous. You scared. You're, you're, you, you have, you have resentment. You feel rejected. And then we stand before God praying uh, 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 in his presence. And then while we're doing that, our hearts are saying, okay, wait a minute now. You ain't all here. God is present, but you're not present. You be present. Bring all of you into the room. But when I bring all of you into the room, their heart start shooting out, shooting me with some truth arrows about what's really going on under in my subconscious mind. And so while God is bringing me to a level of consciousness by exposing and uprooting what the, what's in the subconscious mind, you know what our choice is? To be like the, the, the disciples in the garden. We just going to go to sleep. Just going to go to sleep. I can't, I can't do it. I'm so scared, I'm going to go to sleep. I'm going to become unconscious. I'm going to render myself unconscious. Here we go. Whenever our hearts, I'm at 20, in tormenting self-accusation, make us feel guilty and condemn us, for we are in God's hands. You're in God's hands, for he is above and greater than our consciousness, our hearts. The highest consciousness, if you look up that word, oftentimes it means truth. It's your highest truth. It's your highest truth. Not the truth that we are of. For he is above and greater than our hearts. So you got to tell yourself that. God, your opinion, what you know is greater than what I'm feeling right now. I only know in part. 
and you will gracefully. So I said, you listen, if you lack wisdom, ask God for wisdom. And he will give it to you without finding fault. Telling the truth, but not finding fault. Here we go. For he is above and greater than our conscience, our hearts. And he knows, proceeds, understands everything. Nothing is hidden from him. You might as well come out. And beloved, if our conscience, our hearts do not accuse us, if they do not make us feel guilty and condemn us, we have confidence, complete assurance and boldness before God. So if every time I come to God in prayer or whatever, remember uh, 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 when Jesus said it this way from the natural physical presences, he said, if you have, if you, if you bring a gift to God and and while you on your way, or you even at the altar, and you have uh, 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 all in your heart with your brother, leave your gift. Go make it right. That's this. The point isn't, the biggest point isn't the, the, the physical part, it's what Jesus is, is, is sh was sharing with him spiritually. Your heart is condemning you. It's making your gift unacceptable. You're resisting God, you only feel when you come to bring these good deeds to, don't take that down, these good deeds in, you, you only feel it the way you feel it because the truth is trying to set you free. But you're not going to push your guilt, your, your gift on the truth because the goal is for you to receive the truth so that your gift now will be acceptable. And that real connection between you and the divine presence will be real. Here we go. And beloved, if our, if our conscience do not accuse us, if they do not make us feel guilty and condemn us, we have confidence, complete assurance, and bonus before God. Listen to this. And we receive from him whatever we ask. Can't you see? God said, look now. You're asking me, you're asking me, you're asking me. I'm showing you, I'm showing you, I'm showing you what? Is, is blocking you from getting, from crossing from the, from 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 a, a level of darkness into light. Because once you get into this light, if you trust him, then he said, and we receive from him whatever we ask because we watchfully obey his orders. See, when your heart is condemning you, who do you think that's coming from? That's the truth. But God, is, but your heart is only condemning you in this sense, because your natural heart is going to do that. But that spiritual heart, that spirit of God, is not going to condemn you. So rather than resist, they say, and we can receive from him whatever we ask because we watchfully, who are you watching? We watching me. Obey his orders. We observe ha -ha, his suggestions and his injunctions. And we follow his plan for us and habitually practice what is pleasing to him. Hear that now. Take that thing. That thing was loaded. I didn't know that was so loaded until I started speaking it just now. I mean, reading it just now. So he said, listen, your heart is condemning you because, but, 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 but I'm not condemning you. That's something else that you picked up in practice. Some fear voice. That's something else. I'm not condemning you, but I am telling you the truth. And because you think it, and feel it and receive it from the point of condemnation, you start uh, uh, erecting a, a, a wall of lies and then create a false self. And then you want to know, well, God, why can I find my plan for your life? For my, my plan, your plan in my life. You know why? Because you refuse to let me let you know yourself fully. When I try to make give you full knowledge of yourself, because you can't carry out my plan is half of you. So when I try to keep giving you the full knowledge of yourself so that you can step into this other realm, you won't do it. You keep trying to convince God that you can do his plan with half of you. With only the part that you like. Well, I'm sorry. If you leave the part that you don't like at home, you're going to be at home with it. If you lock it up in a dark room, then you won't be in a dark room with it because it is you. It is you 
It is a part of you. It will be perfected. I don't know. It's a perfection perfected in love to help you. What what was that? To uh, help the imperfect disappear. To help the because when the perfection come, when the light come, the darkness will still disappear. When you submit to God, submit to God and uh, uh, resist Satan, and he'll flee. That's automatic. That happens at the same time. That happens in your same wilderness, in your same desert, during your same trial. Both happen. It ain't one one day and one another day. Both happens. If you submit to God, that's what this person said. Listen, and we receive, listen, and if if, if we have confidence, God, when we when we when we when we let you love us. All of us, and we trust you that you love all of us because you are bigger than these hearts. And we actually embrace that. We can start, we can ask, we and we receive from him whatever we ask. Because you'll be asked, listen, you that perfection will bring you into will change your prayer. It will teach you how to pray. That love. That will overcome that darkness, that fear will teach you how to pray. It will get you off of those those uh, name it claim it level prayers. See, talk if your heart is one place and it's just lip service. This is no, 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 no. You got to believe this. Sure, you got to believe that I am who I say I am. Not what the world say I, says I am. What I say I am. One side of the world wants to say I'm so much grace that ain't nobody got to even say I'm sorry anymore. The other side says I'm so much truth that I just hate folks. No, truth ain't grace. But you got to decide today, people who's listening right now, whose report you're going to believe. Now, it's hard to believe God's report when you're letting all the mother reports in your ear, though. See, this is why I tell some of you chasing stuff. You listen to this, you listen to that, you're all over the place. Because you are creating your own ways of escape. Rather than sitting and trusting God. And waiting for the Holy Spirit to come because that's when you're going to receive power, not before. You're not going to receive power from all this stuff you're doing. What you will be able to do, though, is find, make a lie your refuge and create a, a falsehood to your hiding place, which means this, you're going to create a false self. And that false self will tell you, this is you, but it's not all of you. So I pray that you let go. Reveal to you and allow you the full knowledge to not just know in part, but to desire to be known as you are known. Let's go to slide five. Take that down. I want to say something. Take that down. This was a note I had with the last scripture. What's this? We all have to take responsibilities for our thoughts. How you using your mind. See, you have to pray. You have to take responsibility for your thoughts. So you don't take responsibility for your thoughts. You blame folks. You start thinking about, you, you start trying to analyze someone else's life. You know you can't do that. This is how, this, this how the Bible says it. No one knows the thoughts of a man but that old man's spirit. You don't know. You, you trying to fully know someone, you can't even fully know yourself. And part of the time when you're looking and you're deflecting to somebody else is because your hidden parts are coming up. You don't like some decisions you made. They ain't working for you no more. They didn't get you where you wanted to go. Whatever you was doing, whatever way, whatever you told yourself, wherever you let your own thoughts take, you take responsibility for. 
Here's how David said it in Psalm 139, or whoever wrote Psalm 139. He said, God, help me with my anxious thoughts. Help me with my anxious thoughts. See, that's what it looks like to take responsibility for your thoughts. But you don't. You blame. You think somebody doing something to you. No, they're not. If they are, God is greater than all of that. And then you make decisions from that thoughts I've seen, from the thoughts I've, I've watched it. And then when you're in some kind of space, rather, rather than let that mm, uncomfortable feeling happen, we begin to erect these lies and this false self. Let me tell you something, you all. You already know this. And I pray that I say to you, you all who's listening, who want, who long for God, let me tell you who we know God is not. If you're on the internet and you are outing people on the internet, God is not that. God is not that. I, I don't know why we do this in the name of God, but I know why, because it's in the name of religion. When it's in the name of God, why? Why? That's because at this point, you're not managing your energy way. It's managing you. And so you go tell these stories. So all you're trying to do, be, why is that? Because something happened on the inside and you're trying to do something with that energy. You're just doing that energy with you. you you're being shepherded by darkness. Not by light in the Holy Spirit. Because if you shepherd by the Holy Spirit, you're not going to do that. Because you know what Jesus said? He said it this way. Forgive them for they know not what they do. But when you know that you are in God's hands, as that last scripture said, we are in God's hands. So even though our hearts, this self-accusation make us feel guilty, you know, I did that for you. You chose to do it. See, you need this because regret, regret has a way of slipping in when we get to a certain age and sometimes we have to finally come outside of ourselves and we we did this, we raised children, we did all these things. And during that time, we were busy, it was meaningful. And some of those times, uh, uh, there were some, some other things we could have, we, we didn't focus on. And then some of the things that you did, some of you raised your children, um, some women stayed home with their children. And when they got older, they, they start regretting. No, when you did it, you thought it was a good idea. You thought it was a good idea. That's good enough. Because we, we know in part. And 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 that good idea this did not did not go to waste. But when we tend to get back in the place where now we now we don't have all that busyness to distract us in a good way from some subconscious conversation, some false beliefs. See, when you feel like you're jealous of somebody, there's a false belief somewhere. When you feel that someone is rejecting you in your soul, there's a false belief somewhere. And you know it's a false belief for this reason. Because God has accept, accepted you. If God is for me, who could be against me? That's got to become more than a, than a scripture to quote to people when you want the mighty clap and everybody doing that little Holy Ghost, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, church thing. Listen, I, I don't always remember that when God is for me. If God is for me, who can be against me? And I don't think I say, oh, they against me, God is for me. I just know I felt some kind of way. And so do you. But you have to take responsibility for your thoughts. You know, when I see people, and I, and I think it's a place, I, I saw people who maybe had a career as a, a, an attorney. And one day they realized they just wanted to, I think we saw bake cupcakes. 
How do they get to do that? Why, why don't they act like you or not? You know why? Because they figured when I did a turn in, that is, that, I, it made sense to me. See, unfortunately, when we decide to change, we decide to, to destroy the old something. You got to destroy G. God never destroyed the law. He just taught us how to, he perfected, taught us how to walk it. He never destroyed it. But that's what happens when we don't take responsibility for our thoughts. So if that's you today, you get to say, read Psalm 139, and you get to say like that psalmist, God help me with my anxious thoughts. I'm anxious. You're with me and I'm anxious. Two truths on the table. God, you're here with me and I'm anxious. Versus, versus, I thought this, they said that, who didn't do what? Let me tell you something. This is God trying to get you to know yourself fully. Knowing me fully <laughs> ain't going to help you get asked for whatever you want from God. Not whatever, I'm sorry. For whatever you ask. It ain't whatever you want. It's whatever you ask. Indicating that the asking is in alignment with God. Because the end of that scripture that we read earlier says, uh, and we receive from him whatever he asks because we watchfully obey his orders, observe his suggestions and injunctions. And I like to say, and impulse and feel the injunctions, all those things that's coming. We follow his plan for us. And we habitually practice what is pleasing to him. All that has to go with ask whatever you ask. Now, let's go to slide five. See, this is conscious love because I think that uh, subconscious truths are affecting our conscious love. And so we're burying them and then we are living an unconscious life. Let's read this. But hope, the object of which is seen is not hope. For how can one hope for what he already sees? See, right then and there, um, are you going to surrender to the fact that you're trying to hope in what you see? You see something, now you go try to make a way for yourself. I said, no, 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 you're trying to hope in what you see. Ain't nothing for you to see, but me. It's, it's something for me to be to you and you to accept who I really am. It says, for how can one hope for what he already sees? But if we hope for what is still unseen by us, we wait for it with patience and compulsion. Hmm, what you wait look like? What's your composure when you wait? Is, is the spirit of you huffy? See, if we wait for what is still unseen by us, still unseen by us, not by God, we don't know. We know in part God, by God we are fully known. We wait and we trust that this God of truth has enough grace to abound with that truth when the truth makes uh, shows me that I missed the mark. But there's enough grace that I can wait patiently with composure for this God. Have I already always done that? No, I have not. But today I'm hoping that we shift. We do a, 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 a heart and mind shift to accepting reality. And here's reality. God is the God of grace and truth. That's the reality. Here we go. Verse 25. But if we hope for what is still unseen by us, we wait for it with patience and composure. So too, the Holy Spirit comes to our aid and bears us up in our weakness. You are more than your weakness. But how can the Holy Spirit bear you up in a weakness when you are afraid of your weakness? How can you even know if the Holy Spirit is bearing you up in your weakness, because you won't receive the weakness. See, this lets me know, God, you are okay. I am not my weakness. 
You will give me a way out. Right now, that way out is the Holy Spirit. That's the ultimate way out of this. So too, the Holy Spirit comes to our aid and bears us up in our weakness. For we do not know what prayer to offer now, offer nor how to offer it worthily as we ought. But the Spirit himself goes to meet our supplication and pleads in our behalf with unspeakable yearnings and groanings too deep for utterance. Listen to this. All that stuff in that subconscious that you won't let up. For those of you who will let it up, those of you who will allow, okay, let me go back to those words we use, the, the, the suggestion and the injunctions of God to visit you without finding refuge in a lie and creating a false self. See, then you will be able to, when you accept it as, as yep, God, I'm jealous. Yep, God, um, I'm trying to look like the world. Yes, God, I'm on the world's frequency. Yes, God, I, I'm chasing money. Yes, God, this is why I'm making these decisions. That's why I made this, this, and that. When, when you do that, then the Holy Spirit can, 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 can offer up some prayers for you. And here's the blessing to me. Listen, verse 27. All of us are blessing, but here's a great thing that I hope you embrace. And he who searches the hearts of men knows what is in the mind of the Holy Spirit, what his intent is. Because the Spirit intercedes and pleads before God in behalf of the saints according to and in harmony with God's will. Don't take that. Listen to this. When you get in that situation, this in that situation, and those things, those weaknesses come up, and your heart condemns you and shows you that you've been faking and putting on and false selves and living beyond your means and 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 looking at uh butts and uh 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 uh, 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 drooling over somebody else's man and smiling too hard and flirting and when all when you're in the space by yourself and all that stuff come up, girl, you can't, sir and ma'am, we can't even pray. Even if we did pray, especially because um we are not accepted if we're not accepted as our, as our weaknesses. Let, let me tell you how beautiful God is and his love is. God said, listen, you don't even know what to say. You so stuck you so stuck in some old way of thinking. You so stuck in your make it happen mode. You so stuck in making a way for yourself. When I told you I will create a way, here is my way. Here's my alternative. Here is my option for you. But I love you so much that I sent this helper to talk to me in accordance to my, in, in harmony with, with my will. Because some of us ain't going to get a decent prayer to God. If the Holy Spirit did not ignore what we said and then told God the truth about what we feel. God, this person right here said somebody did something to her. Uh, help her. She's really jealous. <laughs> Listen to me. See, sometimes we get to praying in our strength or talking in our strength. Because we don't like all that other stuff. But God said what the Holy Spirit is going to do for you that I know you won't go do for yourself. When, when, when you got overwhelmed in, in, in these situations, nah, you was going to, you, your false self was going to start praying like that Pharisee, Lord, I give all of this and I give my tithes. And when I show up, I'm not like other men. They don't do this, that, the other, but I do this. Guess what the other, the, the other praying man said, he beat his chest and said, God, I'm a sinner. God said, which one went home justified? See, God understands whatever you're doing is working against you, but God so had loved us this conscious love <laughs> he said listen when they don't know what to pray don't mean you're not praying just ain't praying right somebody prayed for me it was my grandma it was the holy spirit i promise you i ain't saying your grandma ain't sitting up a thing or two <laughs> you better bet this the, the difference is the holy spirit prays in harmony with god's will See, sometimes other people doing it, they, they, don't, they, don't, they don't even know a part. But the Holy Spirit, take the, the spirit of truth goes to God with the truth. Father, Jill going through, you can take that down. Father, she's going through, she's telling you um, right now, God, I need a job. I need a second job. 
I need a third job. You know what the Holy Spirit said to God? She's scared. Ah! Ooh, God, see that energy? See, her words are saying this. But her energy, when ain't nobody else looking, and I'm inside there, I'm right there with her. She's scared. Here's a, a, a statement I wrote for that for me. I said, when my words sound like strength, cover-ups and excuses, and my soul's voice sounds like doubt and my spirit energy breath breathes like fear. The Holy Spirit got to pray, pray for me. See, sometimes when you when you right there, when something happened, we are warriors. Sold out. Live, 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 live. All, of, all of that. When my words sound like strength. Sometimes cover up. Sometimes it's just cover up. Sometimes it's excuse. And the voice of my soul has doubted. See, at that time, all that's happened with my natural self, but guess what's happening with my energy and my spirit? Is breathing fear. So the Holy Spirit goes to God and said, I know she said all that, but let me tell you what her breath said. Her breath said she's scared. God, oh, they making me angry. Her breath says she's scared. They doing this. God, how am I going to do this? I got I, 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 I to buy this. I got to have all this. Before, her breath says she's scared. And the Holy Spirit intercedes to you uh, according to God's will. Oh, her breath says she's scared. Then she needs more love. Because this perfect love is going to dry that fear right out. So let me create some opportunities for you to see and experience my love. Because when she experienced my love and she changed the way that she views the world and she sets her eyes on me, that perfect love going to drive that fear right out. Somebody better hear that. But you got to step into this world right here. This right here, this ain't nothing but a bodysuit. We, we, we in another place right now. I'm not speaking to your senses. I'm speaking to your soul. See, you can't even mess this up. If we believe God's report, you can't even mess this up. Because God already sent the Holy Spirit in to say, listen, this girl asks for money. She, This person asks for this. They think they need a husband. They think they need that. They think a husband is going to fix their, uh, 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 fill, fill that empty space. They saying all that. And, and why are you saying that God, give me a husband, give that's what God gets. That's the Holy Spirit saying. She feels empty. She feels lack. Her, her, her breath says she's scared. Her breath says she's she's not just alone, but she's feeling lonely. Her breath says she's rejected. Her energy surging through her body is giving a different message than what's coming out of her. And I thank God right now that that Holy Spirit don't pay me no mind. Don't pay me no mind when I need not to be paid mine too. Now, I don't know if that's in the right sentence, but it sounded okay to me. Listen. What are you breathing? You're breathing fear. You may not be saying fear, but you're breathing fear. And somebody who has went, gone through that, they can tell that in your words, you're really afraid. You're really not as confident. And your heart is condemning you. And right now, you, you're working on building that lie, making a lie your refuge. I said, let me be your refuge. Let me be your strong tower. You don't need, you don't, you don't, you don't need to find a refuge in lie. Uh, uh, find a lie, uh, a refuge in lie. I already know everything. You ain't hiding nothing from me. If I already know everything and uh, I'm sorry, a meteor didn't drop from the sky and crush you and bust you by now, then you got some false beliefs about me. See, the biggest thing, the biggest, one of the major parts of, of what, what causes us to, to, to walk in sin is how we view God. See, the rest of this stuff is covered. All, all the other stuff, it's, 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 it's covered. Yes, you can see God sent the Holy Spirit to pray where you can't pray. Jesus intercede and the Holy Spirit intercede. God got you real covered. But um, 
you know, he don't want to be misrepresented either. That's what gets in the way. Let's go to slide seven, six, James 124. One, yeah, 24. Now remember, this is a lesson in conscious love. Each layer, like that ego book did, in my opinion, is going to keep pointing to the same thing. Listen, God, I am I don't know myself fully, and I'm afraid of knowing myself fully because I only want to know the parts of me, and I only want to be face to face with the parts of me that I can stand to look at. The other part of me, please hide in the closet. I'll go get it every now and then. I said, I can't let you live like that. You 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 think you think that my purpose and my plan for you isn't real, but it is. It is. Here we go. James 1, 24. Understand this, my beloved brethren. Let every man be quick to hear. A ready listener. Slow to speak. Slow to take offense and to get angry. Here's my question for myself. And I'll share it with you. Am I quick to listen? Hear, listen. Hearing is the process, function, or power of perceiving sight. Listening is paying attention. Am I quick to pay attention? Listening is paying attention to a message in order to hear it, understand it, and physically or verbally respond to it. Am I, right now in this lesson, am I going to listen to this broadcast and then go to the next thing? When somewhere in this broadcast, I can feel God trying to free my soul from some old false beliefs. Am I quick to listen? Am I slow to take offense and become angry, get in my feelings? Am I quick to listen to God? Why is that important? Because if the Holy Spirit is going to speak, and if God is going to speak to me, and is that not happening for me? Because I'm not quick to listen. I'm not invested. In understanding, I'm not really paying attention to a message. I just want to hear, and then I go call people, text in, you know, from church these days. I'm just trying to let people know what I'm hearing. But do you understand? Because that takes a little while. Are you quick to listen? In order for us to get to this conscious love, we're going to have to be quick to listen. But not, I'm not talking about listen to man. I'm talking about listen to the Holy Spirit. And because when I'm not quick to listen, I'm going to resist. Because I'm going to be on another page. I won't be present. Quick to listen means I'm going to pay attention. I'm going to be present. Uh, uh, am I slow to take offense and become angry? See, in this case, this person said, Am I slow to take offense and become angry? I want uh, are you slow to get in your feelings? Because somehow, sometimes your own feelings get in the way of the Holy Spirit. And especially this new day stuff of a, 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 a trend of, you know, my truth, my feelings. Okay, feel them, but don't worship them. Don't, don't make them your deity. Your shepherd. Don't be shepherded by it. This is why when we do things God's way by allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us, that one of the things that's going to come along with that is self-control. What do you think you control? An out-of-control self only needs control. Are you quick to get in your feelings? See, when you get there, there's nothing anybody can say to you. Remember, if you go read the rest of the scripture, it's going to say something like this. You, you're going to hear all this. You're going to look in the mirror. And as soon as it's over, you're going to forget what you look like. Why is that? Because you was just checking off a box. I attended service today. Online, in person. It's not, no, 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 no. Were you paying attention to a message with the purpose in order to hear it, understand it, and physically or verbally respond to it? Nothing like it, no. You know, isn't it something that we don't listen to messages twice, but we look at movies three or four times? Because to show what frequency we're on. We'll, we'll hear something that'll change our lives, but we won't look at it again. Because we think because we've heard it in this form that we already know it. But you look at a, a movie over and over again within a lifetime, four or five times. I pray that we make a shift today. 
Let's go to slide seven. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Okay, you know what I like? Somebody asked a question. God, what do you want? What, what should I come with? Should I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with 10,000 rivers of oil? Should I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has showed you, oh man, what is good. Teach you what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? The Lord is calling to, I'm sorry, of you to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. He said, what am I asking you to do? Know that I'm a God of truth. Know that I'm a God of grace. And know that I don't want nothing to do with your ego. And know that your ego don't belong in this space. That's what it means to walk humbly with your God. What's that mean? God, teach me. Expose me to whatever hinders me and is blocking my conscious love flow. In grace, truth, and pride. Slash ego. He said, listen. The law is calling to the city and to fear your name is wisdom. To fear your name, your character, who you be is wisdom. Heed the rod and the one who appointed it. Somebody better say something. Heed the rod and the one who appointed it. But that's difficult for me to do because the way this rod works is that it exposes was in my subconscious mind and it leads me to be known as I am fully known. And it doesn't force me, but it suggests that I now become one inside and just embrace all of me. And then this God will come back and tell you, and I already know nothing is hidden from me. So conversation should be over. You ain't hide nothing from me. So what you're doing is useless. It only impresses man. It only keeps man off your back. Your, your good or your uh, 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 not so proud parts have never stopped the sun from shining on you. It has never caused the rain to rain on somebody and not rain on you or the sun to shine on somebody and not shine on you. God said, I just send the sun. I don't say sun only shine on the good part of will. But make sure the other part of will that, that's undeveloped. Make sure it suffers in the darkness. Nope. Nope. I said this. You want to keep getting, keep it, finding stuff, something in the closet. Which means you keep stepping away from the sun thinking that you can hide. You don't have to. You are of the truth and you are of love. All you have to do is let God do what God does best. Submit to God. And the adversary ain't going to flee. Turn on the light in the room and darkness immediately goes away. Darkness don't even slowly go when you turn the light on. It's a quick change. Listen, you, you, you can live in that light right there. You can live that light if you want to. Here we go. He, the rod, and the one who appointed it. It's hard to read the he, the rod, and the one who appointed it because you, you, you don't see the love of God. You see the rod. You don't see the purpose of the rod. And then you're not, you're not heeding the one who appointed it. This one who's appointing this rod that we talk about in this message today is not like your mama, your grandmama, and your next door neighbor who did whatever they did. Or your father and all the other people. Teachers, good ones, bad ones, no. The one that's doing this right here is not the same one that you learn from before you open your heart to God. He said, am I still to forget, O wicked house, your ill-gotten treasure and short ephah, which has occurred? Should I quit a man with this on the scale with a bag of false ways? What do I want you to get from that? Because I'm, mm, I'm going to keep going. For false ways. Her rich men are violent. Her people are liars and their tongues speak deceitfully. Therefore, I have begun to destroy you, to ruin you because of your sin. Your spirit? Nah. 
That other self? Yes. Which one? Go? He says, listen, you will eat but not be satisfied. Your stomach will still be empty. He said, listen, let me tell you what's going to happen. If I do not bring truth in your space, you will not feel fulfilled. You're going to keep eating and not be satisfied. If I don't remove, bring you to the place where you're going to embrace your whole entire self. If I don't tell you that I that nothing is hidden from me so that we don't ever have to have a conversation, but what about this? But what about this? Do you see this? What do you think about that? I, when I tell you nothing, God tell you nothing is hidden from him. He has already shut down any back and forth. I see it all. So who you hiding from? Trust me with your life, God will say. These human beings, okay, well, every, everybody is need, in need of spiritual growth. But this is God doing this. This is the Holy Spirit doing this. Here we go. Slide eight. You're coming for the whole structure. I want you to get this part. All of that is to bring you here because I'm trying to get your mind to understand where, where you are in this spiritual walk with this, 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 this creator of ours. The beginning of the good news of Yeshua, the Messiah, the Son of God, it is written in the prophet Isaiah. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare the way before you. Now, there's, one, there's a message, right, that comes before. It says, the voice of someone crying out in the desert, pe the desert pre pre prepare the way of Adonai. Make straight paths for him. These are all instructions. So it was that John the Baptist, appeared in the desert, proclaiming an immersion involving turning to God from sin in order to be forgiven. See, somehow we're trying to get to the benefits of being forgiven without turning to God. And, and because turning to God in sin has become, oh, let me not do this and, and pick it. No, here's, you know, you know, know what you're going to do when you turn to God? You're going to change the way you think. You're going to turn away from how you see God. Turn, return to love. Love that is has with it the, the, the components of grace and truth. Return. Don't be afraid of truth. Don't be afraid of God. Don't be afraid of love. Don't be afraid of God. What do you say? The spirit of truth. The essence of God. Truth. God is love. The essence of God. Love. Don't be afraid of either one of those. When you in your when 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 when, when you have to be take responsibility for your own thoughts and choices. Because if I don't turn, then guess what? Um, those sins will be forgiven, but I won't have access to what that forgiveness should have brought in my space. Here we go. Whenever you enter a house, second bullet, stay there until you leave the place. Here we go. And if the people of some place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, then as you leave, shake the dust off your feet as they wanted to them. So they set out and preached that people should turn from sin to God. What is your sin? Thinking that you can do this without God. What is your sin? Thinking that, what is my sin? Thinking that I can live um, with knowing myself partly. What is my sin? Well, how, what mark am I missing? I'm missing the mark of God's plan and me being God's idea and being created in love by God for God. I'm missing the idea of being the light because I'm too busy trying to keep some part of me in the darkness. I'm missing that mark. He says, so they set out and preached that people should turn from sin to God. They set out. This was not in a building. This happened like would have happened like this. If, if this was when all this started, it would have happened at a grocery store. It would have happened just out and about, but it's very intentional. They expelled many demons and they anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. So I want you to see two things in the scripture. 
For those people who resisted that help, they also resisted the healing, the anointing, and the expelled demons. See, third bullet, love is not forced. Healing requires our cooperation. That's what that bullet says. Listen, if you coming in to them and they ain't cooperating, I don't care what you do. I don't care how many times you say it. <coughs> you know, if they got their heart closed and their door closed and um, hell bent on refuge and lies and lies and refuge and false self and hidden places, <coughs> excuse me, and they hell bent on that, what you want to do? Because healing requires cooperation. You want to be healed? Stop resisting. You want to be healed? Stop resisting. It requires your cooperation. See, these are all the things that were just all out there floating here and there everywhere that we got to bring back in. Love is not forced. And healing requires our cooperation. We got to turn the truth. We, what, did, what, what did John about to say? Turn to God. Turn the truth. See, we're afraid to turn the truth and we're afraid somebody's afraid to turn to grace because they think people are going to uh, go too far and they 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 are, are, are afraid to turn the truth. But God is both of those. So what you going to do? Turn to God. Return. You know what that you know why that should bless you? Because he said turn, but return means that somewhere in somebody's mind, and I'm going to say the mind of God, you are all some you already on that side. Return means I was there, now I have to do it again. See, God said, when I did this, I said it was good. And I finished it. I was done. So God can say, I have a version of you in my mind that you don't have in your mind. Come and get in the mind of Christ so you, Jill, and anybody else who's listening can get to the version of them that's in God's mind. Hallelujah. There is a version of you. There is a perfected you. There is a you that's not far. There is a you that don't have to hide. There's a you that's created in truth. There's a you that's created in love. And anything that ain't sending you, those two messages will be burnt off. Will be destroyed. Because they are sending you the wrong message. What did we just read? There was a message in the wilderness. And it was telling you, turn, return, return to love. You lost your first love. Some of us never really knew our first love because religion took the place of our first love. And we did religion better than we did God. And we was more uh, 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 loyal to religion and friendships and relationships and buildings and all those things than we were loyal to the Father. And John the Baptist said, if you want to be forgiven and you want to ask to know what to ask for, then turn. Today is about turning. Conscious love. Turn. Turn back to God. See God for who he is. Not for who you wanted to be. Not who we created. God said, I'm right here. If you would just knock, I'll open the door. But you ain't knocking. And you ain't seeking me. You seeking your way out. You're not seeking my way out. My way out is truth. My way out is love. Your way out is fear, anxiety, and disturbance. I said, hey, my way out. That's the way into something I'm trying to get you out of. Listen to this. As I said before, when we turn to God, all that is not real, that is not from him in us, it automatically fades and flees. Submit to God. Walk in the light and the darkness automatically disappears. I said, listen, it'll all disappear. When we turn to God, you're looking for your authentic self? Just turn to God. And everything that's not authentic will not remain. See, we're working too hard. You know what the hard work is? When they ask Jesus to believe in the one that sent him. Believe in Jesus, believe in the one that sent him. That's the work. What am I going to believe about God? That he says everything. Sees everything. 
So when I'm sitting in that room and I'm 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 making myself over and I'm doing all that, go put on your makeup, put on your whole face, put on what you want, but just say this. Guess what? I know I'm putting this on God. This ain't real. That's what you know. Okay, then then you then you going out in the world on that day to be a performer. You know what I mean? There's performers out there in New York. They all over Broadway. But listen, they know they perform. I promise. You think you. Nobody knows that you're performing. Every true spirit knows that you're performing. Every authentic person knows what unauthentic looks like. What the struggle is, because they don't have to struggle themselves, right? Here we go. Listen to this. Jesus resisted the voice, the message of the adversary in the wilderness. Each time Jesus submitted to the message of God, it is written, he kept he filled the old space, the space of the Old Testament uh, from the adversary's message. Remember, the adversary gave him messages. If you are the son of God, he said, it is written. You know, you can do this. It is written. See, every time that other message came, Jesus gave him the message of God. Mm, mm, mm. Um, but he didn't use, but guess what he didn't do? He had a book to open. He was here. It was a living word. <clears throat> he was already living it so he could recall it. That wasn't a preaching. Even though we use that stuff for preaching. Nope, nope. That was an engagement. That was a submission to God. That was a healing and a cooperation. Another thing I put in my notes is this. And I said that you are not your weakness. The, ear, the spirit exceeds for you. And here's the blessing. As I said earlier, when the Holy Spirit goes and shares, when you when you in your situation, the Holy Spirit shares the real message. Thank God he don't share my lies and my cover-ups. <laughs> I always said that. She's scared, God. She's saying all that stuff. Mm, she going to do this. She going to go by the school. You know how many times I I, 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 I called University of Maryland to start my master's degree? Because I was like, I, I got to do something. God said, you, you scared. Now, does it mean that you would never do those things? No. It just means that when you, if you go into that space, let, let the spirit shepherd you into that space versus fear. I'm almost done. Slide nine. Before I go there, stay right there. I want you also to know this. What happens sometimes we hear that voice in the wilderness, that truth. See, we think that truth is coming to judge us. If you get to see that that truth is not, it's just truth. It's not coming to condemn you and to judge you. It's just coming to expose you to the real you and expose you to what is not the real you. One way or the other, you're going to get to the real you through that exposure. Now let's read the scripture. Jeremiah 3. A cry is heard on the barren heights, the weeping and pleading of the people of Israel because they have perverted their ways and have forgotten the Lord their God. I want to bring that to your attention because most of the time, what are we dealing with? For them, they forgot the Lord their God. Listen. We forgot this thing right here, that God is this grace and truth in balance, though. Not two extremes, in balance. And so now we're afraid of God because we're afraid of truth. We're afraid of God because we're afraid to love again, because somebody hurt us. And God said, you, you, you have forgotten me. You're not practicing who I am. You're practicing what they did, but you're not practicing what I am. You're not, you're practicing and you're living from what somebody did, but you're not living from who I am. That's what I want you to hear. Listen. Because they have perverted their ways and have forgotten the Lord, forgotten the Lord their God. Return faithless people. I will cure you of backslide right there. Right there. I will reach, I will cure you from backslide. <coughs> but how do you return? How do you return? You return by stop, not calling God outside his name anymore. You re return by fearing his name. How do we fear his name? His, his, his person, his character, his reputation. We embrace this truth, this reality. God is love and truth, but God is none of that is for condemnation purposes. 
It is all to bring us to the place where we can be fully known. We can know as we are fully known. And then we can walk this thing out. And our hearts won't continue to condemn us when we go to God. And we can actually ask God, show me what to do while I'm here. What you want me to do without putting our hands on it. Here we go. Return faithless people, I will cure you a backslide. Yes, we will come to you for you are the Lord our God. Here we go. Surely the idolatrous commotion on the hills and the mountains is a deception. All of that, all of that commotion is a deception. All of those words, it's a deception. All of what you're telling yourself, those old false beliefs, that's a deception. Surely in the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel. God is our deliverer, not one hell bent on punishing. But God is truth, and that's going to feel like consequence and punishment. The word that we use, it's going to feel like exposure and something uncomfortable. From our youth, shameful God has consumed the fruit of our father's labor. From our youth, God, some shame based this, some gods, some, some ways out that we created has consumed the fruit of our father's labor, has consumed the fruit of those who went before us spiritually that we read about in the Bible. Their flocks and herds, their sons and daughters, let us lie down in our shame and let our disgrace cover us. This is where it can become. If you do not see that even though all of this happened to you, God has given you a comforter. He has given you a helper. He has done all those beautiful things for you. And when you don't know what to pray, because you're still praying from your false self or from your scared self, the Holy Spirit said, oh, that's foolish. Here's the real deal. And the real stuff go to God and God's will. And God gets to respond back from what the Holy Spirit said. Not that foolishness we're talking when we all scared and afraid. Somebody better hear how good this God is. Listen. Let us lie down in our shame and let our, our disgrace cover us. We have sinned against the Lord our God, both we and our fathers, from our youth till this day. We have not obeyed the Lord our God. Take that down. Listen to this. It's been a long time. Now, I got something else, but I'm not going to do it. Oh, yes, I am. Slide 10. And then I'll, then, then I'll end there. I have 11. But I'm going to do this. Here we go. Listen. If we just finished Jeremiah 3, this is the next one. If you will return, O Israel, return to me, declares the Lord. If you put your detestable idols out of my sight and no longer go astray. He already said, I have a cure for you, backslider. I'm going to call it the Holy Spirit today. He said, put your detestable idols out of my sight and no longer go astray. And if in a truthful, just, and righteous way you swear, look at that. In a truthful, just, and righteous way, you swear, as surely as the Lord lives, then the nations will be blessed by him, and in him they will glory. Somebody better know this cover, wash, drink this all the way up. Listen to that. If you would, listen, listen, this is what it said. If, and if in a truthful, just, and righteous way, see, all them lies, refuge lies, and false selves cannot do this. If you can just come and be honest and then in a truthful and just and righteous way, you swear, this is what you're going to say, as surely as the Lord lives. See, that, that, but that has to be in a truthful and a just and a righteous way, not a religious way. And when I mean religious way, no, no lip service, no just saying things because we, 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 we have a, a culture of being worked up by a preacher's voice in a tone and a style. This is the style, truthful, just in righteous way. When you say to God, as surely as the Lord lives, he said, when that happens, the nations will be blessed by him and in him, they will glory. I said, listen, as surely as the Lord lives, God, I trust you. I receive you. Here's all of me. Here's a list. Let me write down and get this stuff that's in my subconscious. 
to come up because I keep pressing it down with lies and falsehoods. God, I'm not happy about this when I did this right here. I feel some kind of way. And you, listen, you don't even have to go search hard. All you got to do is step into the light of truth and the Holy Spirit within you. The truth within you, will I'm telling you, will start unpacking those bags. But don't you feel no shame. See, the goal is don't you receive a message of shame. That has to happen. These things have to happen. And what's going to show up with the message of love, there's going to be a message of shame. I should have known that. Then, then, then it's going to come blame. See, if I didn't listen to them, I was going to do this, but then they told me and they said, mm. just sit, just wait for a minute. Wait for the Holy Spirit. He's going to bring the message of love. And that message of light and love is going to drive out that message of fear and shame. This is conscious love, people. You can live it. We can have it. It's already ours. We just have to let God give it to us. But love cannot be forced. God needs your cooperation. And I pray after this message that you will be willing to cooperate with God to get you to the best version of yourself, the, 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 the person that he knows and he's always known. Amen. God bless you. I just want to take a moment because we were in a space uh, for a second. But if there was ever a time and I wrote all on my paper today that you were going to believe that you were perfectly imperfect. Today is today. If there was a time you were going to believe that God, me and you are in this temple together, there is absolutely no way I can hide from you. It's absolutely no way. If there was a time to believe that your emotions, your envy, your fear, your anger, your rage is just an awakener to show you what's inside, it may have been provoked from something outside, but it was there all along. If there was a day to believe that so that God could come and heal you as he's healing me of a whole lot of stuff. If there was a day that you were going to believe and accept the fact that this wall of theology and doctrines and teachings and understandings, it has to come down because it's blocking the life of God talking to you directly or you're repeating another man's words. I can attest to that. Today will be the day. I thank God for the words that we heard today because conscious love means He's revealing to you where you've been unconscious, where you can't see. How good of a God is that to tell you that you're blind and you think it that you see? I thank you, Lord, for the words that you've given to us today. And as our teacher just taught us, Jill just taught us, the immediate feeling, and I can attest to this because this is part of my history from trauma and everything else, shame is going to come. You're going to feel bad for who you are. You're going to feel worthless for who you are. You're going to say, I should have known better, or I heard that word. Revisionist history is what they call it. You hear something, and then you try to undo what you've done in the past and try to say, I should have known something. It's impossible, because if you had known better, you would have done it. So I thank God for those words today, and I will close with this. Don't fill in the blanks. Accept the exposure for what it is. And as we've been learning, to sit. He's going to come. He will come with an answer. And he will heal as he promised he would do. With the truth that he just brought and now the wounds that then came that were inflicted by that truth you bring healing salve to it. Father, we thank you today for the words of love and truth and honesty, Father. We thank you, Father, for the severity of things that we hear, knowing that on the other side, there's healing bomb, Father. There's healing, Lord. No way would you bring truth to us without bringing an answer, Lord. And no way would you bring truth to us without having a purpose to it, to unlock, to unleash our spirits. Our spirits have been locked down by the lies. And every time you have brought something in our space, Blocking, blocking, but no longer, Lord. Father, we thank you and receive this today, Lord. We say, we agree, I agree, 
I don't care if you've been here 55 years or five. God, whatever it is, we receive and we thank you today. We thank you, Father, for making us aware of what we want to wear of. We thank you, Father, for the temples that you made. These bodies, these spirits, these souls, Lord, that speak to us that tell us what's going on on the inside, Father. I thank you, Father, for the person who won't hate that, no longer hate their bodies, hate their emotions, hate their beings, Lord, when they're beautiful gifts to us, Lord, to let us know that, one, you love us, you're here with us, and that you're healing us in our spirits. We're beyond this. And one day, Father, when this is in the ground and the worms have eaten it up and our our skeletons have turned to dust, Lord. We'll stand before you, Lord, saying hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But until then, Lord, you're here with us and you're changing us, Lord. Somebody needs to know, Lord, today. They don't have to be ashamed, God, of you. They can't hide from you, Lord. Help them today, Lord God. I know, Lord, because it was me for many, many years, Lord, with a face of being okay with the face of perfection, Father, with the face of performance, not knowing that's what it was, Lord, but help us today, help them today, Lord, to overcome. It is possible, Father. We've seen glimpses of it in ourselves, Lord. We've seen it. It's possible, God. I know it. We know it. I've experienced it, Lord. And we thank you for this today, Lord, for blessing us to know this one thing, that we're perfectly imperfect until we cross over to the other side. It is in the name of your son, Yeshua. It's in Jesus' name. This is his name, Father, that we thank you for this. Amen. Praise the Lord.